G'day everyone, it's me, the anti theocrat back with another one. Before I go into the main content, uh, it's a quick sales pitch. It's the only one you're getting, so enjoy it. Below these videos, I do attach all links to the information if there are links to be had. Uh, I also archive all of the information if that's possible. I also supply links to other platforms for my content and uh, how to support me if you wish to do so. That'd be nice, but no requirement. That's it. That's my intro. That's my sales pitch. It's all I've got. It's all you're ever going to get. And now, on with the show. So, I have an article I want to cover, but before I do, I want to talk about how I drop a lot of stuff that I wish I could really do videos on. Um, at the moment, my desktop is covered in stuff that I could do. Uh, but at the end of the day, I end up throwing some of it away because other people have covered it and I think they've done fine. I don't have their audience, so, you know, my covering, it's not really serving much more purpose. Um, sometimes I have a slightly different perspective on things. Uh, I do tend to read into the words that are put in front of me and get a little bit more out of them uh, than some of the people I've seen doing coverage so maybe i'll cover it but a lot of the time i end up dumping stuff sometimes it just gets too old before i get around to making a video and then you have stuff like this that i wish i could do a video on but there's not really enough material here and i would be i don't want to criticize the science because i don't think the science is as bad as the reporting maybe the science doesn't quite come off the way and it was a french study so i don't have the language all the access to information i can get to the abstracts um for parts of this for where parts of this cover um, article cover but that's all i can get to and i'm not paying to get into these things because you hope that when the media report on these things they do a damn better job than this and if this is where the study went well i don't have that ability to track it down and, and what would be the point anyway because these people obviously fucked up um, but anyway the title reading how self-control can actually unleash your dark side is wrong this is wrong because people who have self-control can control their dark side so this can't actually uh, i mean yes everyone has a dark, has has bad times everyone can go there and self-control is lost at that time but that's not what this is talking about. This That's not even what the study was about. What the study was about is people have people with great willpower uh, are lauded by their uh, peers for their self-control. Well, no, they're not. It's not self-control, and this is the problem. If we look into... I was Because I go through terms and things, and, and sometimes I think, look, I just want to clarify with myself that I'm on the right path with you when I express about this term so i looked up conscientiousness because it was one of the terms used and i found the word what i was looking for self-discipline these people have self-discipline and they are lauded these gym junkie types and diet types and whatever else are lauded for their self-discipline not their self-control and these are different things self-discipline is when you structure your life because there are not structures in place but when other people come and offer you structures you fall into line and this study essentially said to people um we're putting you in a game show what you've got to do is electrocute the people on the other person on the other side if they get anything wrong and these people went on electrocuting people uh, when people who were more conscious of what they were doing to someone else stopped and that's because they'd been put in a position where someone had laid out a structure for them and they followed the rules. People with self-control are not necessary for necessarily following rules. If the rules change, you, you can work around by controlling yourself. If someone says electrocute someone, you control yourself by saying, I don't want to. It's very different to self-discipline. 
But how the hell do you address this and make a complete video out of it? Well, there, I've just addressed it, and I hope you all got the fucking idea that when you see science reporting, you really have to fucking read it. <laughs> you have to go a bit deeper. Because if you believe that self-control brings out people's dark side, that's just terrible. Because I think of self-control and I think of the male pretensity to... Um, whatever. Um, to control our emotions. And that doesn't necessarily bring out a dark side. It just certainly doesn't bring out the dark side that these people are suggesting. These people are suggesting that because I don't cry, I might electrocute someone more in this title. But not in the bulk of what is said about how the study was carried out. So anyway, uh, I will move on because this is not what I want to cover and I've spent, already f I've spent five minutes on it already. So let's move on, shall we? What I wanted to cover was, can early intervention help raise better boys? Well, I want to know, can early intervention help raise better girls? And then I want to know what intervention means, and I want to know what a better girl is. Same as I'd like to know what intervention it means, and what a better boy is. Unfortunately, I don't think I want it from these people. Because these people, inside the effort to curb toxic masculinity, yes, these people think masculinity is toxic, and therefore they want to intervene to change it. And I don't believe that masculinity is necessarily toxic, the same way that I don't believe that femininity is necessarily toxic, but a lot of women are toxic. Uh, before it takes root. So, yes, uh, I do not understand how people can come to the conclusion that masculinity the the uh, just the the broad ranging definition masculinity can be toxic um, and they never tend to say aspects of masculinity uh, the the pretense the 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 um thing where boys are more likely to strike one another than to well, be bitchy and stab each other in the back verbally with friends the way women do. Um, this could be considered toxic in the same way it could be considered toxic with the girls. But nobody seems to be willing to say it is just aspects of human nature that need to be changed. And then do they? Or do they serve a purpose? I don't know. Anyway, in a Nova Scotia classroom... Uh, educator Morris Moe Green, because that's important, invites a dozen pubescent boys to draw their chairs in a circle. A oh, good a circle jerk for the boys. Uh, he helped them relax with a silly icebreaker question. Like, if you could speak an animal language, I wonder if he does this with girls, what language would it be? Okay, stupid question, but I get it. Icebreakers. I'm an entertainer. I work with children. Icebreakers are important. And then gets down to business. Yes, and does he do this with the girls? Green's program is called Guys Work. Is there a girls work thing? Because at the moment, I'm seeing a man so drenched in soy that someone should just fucking drown him in it. Um... Aimed at boys in grade 7 and 9 in Nova Scotia. And I'm still not hearing about how he does it with the girls as well. It covers toxic topics such as sexual coercion, power dynamics, and, the in and intimate partner relationships. Why the... Pornography and gender-based violence. Why the fuck is he doing this? Who asked him? Where is he doing this? Which fucking soy-and-soaked parents are sending their kids to this guy? This is the duty of parents. This is not the duty of some wanker calling himself Mo. Uh, yeah. Sexual coercion. Yeah, because women never fucking sexually coerce anyone, do they? No. They're far fucking better built for it than we are. Uh, it, I mean, 80% of men, or maybe more, are not in the... Um, 
hypersexualized um, section of the male population that women are going to be that interested in. The, but women, it's the other way about, isn't it? There's only 20% who, if they laid it on the line, couldn't sexually coerce a man, a boy. Don't fucking give me this shit about telling boys about sexual coercion. If a boy is lucky enough to get a girl into bed and he wants to encourage a certain behaviour out of her, fucking good luck to him. It took some effort just to be the guy that she wants to sleep with. You might as well get your, what you want out of it. And and while we're on this, this is something I get really pissed off with, with women. And I just... There's another article I'm going to cover that does this. Um, women who think that they hold they have no part in getting themselves off and i know i've covered this before i think i did a video sleep um, fornicating with dead fish um look the when you're in a relationship for any length of time sex the sex games and things that some people like to play they've got to get old you just don't do that shit all the time and nobody's getting off on it it's just fucking gameplay i mean a few weirdos might be but other people they're just working at it because they they think that's what you want and in reality for most people all they do all they want is to get off now for a man that can just mean penetrative sex and it doesn't matter where penetrating but in and out and off you go and hey presto you're done well for women that's not an inachievable place to find um, sexual gratification now a man can go down on you and he can lick your nipples and whatever else but he's not going to fucking get off on that is he so the goal is to try and find a place where you both get off together and I know it's not fucking easy. And the more you fuck around playing games and with electronic devices and things, the less sensitive you are to certain human touch. Anyway, I've gone right off the fucking uh, reservation here. Um, I just, I just don't think that sexual coercion is a terrible thing. I think that a guy who can get a woman into a, sec a situation where he can sexually coerce her is doing well for himself. A woman who's doing that is doing no fucking power, no trick at all. Even the bottom 20% will find some guy if they really want. Uh, pornography and gender-based violence. Well, you know, I, I think there is something to address in pornography, but I think it's as simple as, remember, this is a show for the cameras. This is not how people have sex. This is not how you need to go about your own sex life. Find your own way. Remember, this is an act for the camera. And, and I think you could essentially leave it at that. This is not how real people act. This is a movie. I mean, I'm not an action hero running around fucking blowing people up. I don't look at those things and think that. So what you need to do is remind your kids that this is a fiction. Anyway, and gender-based violence. Yes, is he telling the boys to watch out for the girls? Because when the girls hit, the boys can't hit back. And that's a gender-based violence that runs only one way. I'm betting what he does is tell the boys that they shouldn't be violent. Which is only adding to the problem of when girls are violent. Now, it would be nice if nobody would be violent. But on the basis that if someone is going to be violent, then swings and roundabouts. I don't fucking care. Um, I, I'm actually not that concerned about gender-based violence because... The people who are violent in society make up a very small part of our society and they fucking generally earn it. It's generally something that they... that, 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 that is part of their lives somehow. There might be a few innocent victims, but on the whole, I doubt there are many. 
Uh, this fucking violence amongst partners and shit. <laughs> I'm just so fucking over it. And there are enough studies to show that women uh, will encourage violence, will will drive the violence in their relationships far more frequently than the males will. So it's something about their personality that drives the violence. In any case, it's not gendered, is it? It's generational, and we fucking know that from Aaron Pizzi. Thank you, Aaron. And I just get sick to fucking death of seeing the feminists flogging this shit and flogging it to boys. Always to boys. Through information sharing, discussion and group exercises, Green encourages self-reflection and vulnerability. Why the fuck would you encourage vulnerability in anyone? I just don't fucking understand that. I just commented on um, the World War II mural that's being pulled down in some bloody university somewhere, a couple of them. Because, oh, too many white people, someone might get upset. Look, anyone who gets up upset at that, anyone, you send them home to be coddled by their fucking mothers, give them a teat to suck on, because they're not fucking adult enough to go to a university. And I don't care, that's students and staff. Should not be at a fucking university if they're upset by something like that. Grow the fuck up. Vulnerability should not be taught as an adult concept. Vulnerability is something you're allowed to be. But vulnerability is also something that we should avoid. Because what we do is we end up training people like fucking Mo to be soy boys and teach other people to fucking cry all the time. <sighs> On the floor, in the centre of the circle, are two areas marked OK and not OK. Green asks the boys whether they think they uh, become... When they become parents... He's encouraging them to become parents... Boys, I don't even know if it's worth it these days. <laughs> um, they'll be strict or more lenient once that seed is planted. Oh, good. So he's um he's going to teach them the Doctor Spock parenting that no discipline is right. Now, once that seed is planted, he gives each boy a stack of cards on which consensual, intimate acts are written. What the fuck? What the fuck are you doing? grade seven to nine and you are giving these boys cards with intimate acts written on them these boys have got enough problems with going to bloody class and having a crack and a hard on and having to worry about that in school without you sexualizing their day <laughs> fucking hell everything from holding hands to taking a shower together or intercourse with a condom a oh, fucking hell is this guy some sort of fucking sex freak? Is he a predator? Why the fuck is he doing this with boys? I wonder if he does this with girls. Or is he just attracted to young boys? The boys are asked to imagine that they're the father of a 15-year-old son and determine which of the acts would allow him to engage in. Almost everything ends up in the OK pile. Often green notes to an... Uh, excitable chorus of oh yeah and that's my boy then green suggests a change what the f i'm still fucking blown out that this guy thinks he's these kids parents what the fuck is he doing where the fuck are these boys parents i wouldn't let my parent my kids anywhere near this fucker this is my duty to my children it might not be a duty I'm overly good at. It might be one that I'm a bit vague about. But half of being a young boy is learning. Learning for your fucking self. I did. I was having age at the sex at the age of 15 and I learned it for myself. My parents were absolutely fucking useless at anything in the way of education. Uh, my mother, when she found out, her only uh, instruction was... I hope you're having safe sex. <laughs> I remember yelling it at me. Um, and she still blames my girlfriend for our relationship. No, 
No, no, no, sorry, Mum, I'm bringing it up again. I was mature, I was ready, and I was ready a long time before that particular girl came along. Um, in any case, who the fuck does this guy think he is? Why does anyone give him this job to do? Is this an official job through the schools or something that he's been given? I'm not being told why he's doing this. I think he's a predator. At this point, in this article, while I'm not being told he's officially running these workshops for some official organisation, you know, the education department or something, I have to assume this guy's just a predator, interested in the sex lives of 15-year-old boys. Then Green suggests a change. The boys must now envision being the father of a 15-year-old girl. Yeah, and so now they've got to think about the sexuality of girls. Well done. Instantly, the mood shifts. They'll go, whoa, says Green. And some start squirming in their chairs. Yep, because you're making them think about the sexuality of girls. What a fucking sort of freak are you? A kid will typically just kick the entire pile over to the not okay area and I'll often go what the fuck just happened dude I don't think you should be anywhere near children it's often a funny movement a moment green says because the boys are immediately aware of the difference yeah and I would say the girls around them are part of how they learn that difference really and the reason that they think it's okay to, you know, uh, go, whoa, when it's the boys, is because they learned that amongst their peers. You're not going to crush that. You're just not. And I'm sorry, but it is part of human nature. A man is uh, equipped to spread his seed far and wide, whereas a woman is biologically um, equipped to produce one every nine to 12 months, and um, she has to choose that seed carefully, right? Th these are just the biological norms for our society, for our our species. It's not really that big an issue. Before I go on, I saw something up here that I thought was interesting. No, 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 no it's all right. Different article. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So then I'll start explaining that they want to protect their daughters, but are quickly confounded by how to reconcile that idea of raising a son to be a player. No. No. Not an issue at all. Because what you do is you teach your girls to say no, and you teach your boys that no is a right answer. That's it. That's it. There's no fucking trick to it. Right? The boys are going to come on horny. And what you do is you say to the boys, it is not okay if someone doesn't want it. It is the best thing to walk away and say, okay, I will try someone else or another time, depending on the, the way the answer's given. It might be given, no, not now, or uh, nah. <laughs> and you'll think, oh, well, it might be an opening to come back later. And Fucked if I'm going to say to people, no, 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 once she says no, never never go there again. Fucking hell. People would never have relationships if they listened to people like this dick. Um. Anyway, yeah, they are aware of the differences. And no, it isn't a big problem. All you have to do is teach the boys that no is the right answer to accept. Yes, is obviously going to be the better answer. And then all you do is tell them how to be safe when they do it. They don't need you giving them fucking flashcards of of sexual positions or whatever shit it is you're giving Mr. Creepy. You're an arsehole. For Green, uh, uh, yes, and, and it is okay for the girls to be taught that no is the right answer to give. And that should anyone not accept no for an answer, they are to tell somebody immediately. Then, and, and, and also, while you're there, while you're there, explain to the girls why accusing things of people of things that they haven't done is a fucking horrendous thing to do. 
So if someone says, do you want to fuck? And she says no, and he walks away, at no point should she be left thinking, well, if if I go and have a chat with my friends and they say, oh, he word raped me, then I can report him for raping me. At no point should she be left thinking false accusations are the right thing to do. And I wish the fucking legal system would step up in that one. But these are not things that should be impossible to teach, and it should be things that parents teach. Not you, you fuckwit. For Green, this is a perfect uh, segue into ultimate, the ultimate, his ultimate message. If we want to protect girls in our lives, maybe... We need to think about how to raise our sons, he tells them. How about we tell our daughters not to fucking come on to the boys? How about we tell our daughters not to tease the boys? How about we tell our daughters not to use their bodies as weapons against the boys? How about we tell the girls um, that they are not necessarily things that boys need to protect and how about we teach the boys that it is not their fucking duty to protect the girls and how about we tell them both that everyone is fucking equal in this regard and if you see someone in trouble then it's your job male female or fucking otherwise <laughs> i don't know i just got a bit of fucking ramble there i got a bit lost in it but why the fuck is it the duty of these boys to protect girls? Who is telling the girls that it's their duty to protect the boys? To not molest the boys? To not um, tease the boys? To not false accuse the boys? Fuck. On social media, at me too rallies yeah we can fuck off with those and in their daily interactions uh, girls and young women are increasingly spe speaking out on a range of issues related to gender-based violence and consent yeah but we're still not letting boys talk about it are we we're still not accepting that boys have these things happen probably more often than girls but they're not allowed to talk about it i have been a male victim of gender-based violence and consent. But issues related to gender-based violence and consent. I've been a male victim of females on these things. If they're such fucking horrendous crimes like you think they are, which I think there is nuance to everything, but I've been a victim of this with women as the perpetrators. And who the fuck do I talk to about it? You know, I have reported a, a Me Too case as a male victim. And you know what? I was told to shut up. It wasn't my place. But experts say uh, boys and young men still lack the tools, knowledge and empathy to act as genuine partners in a fight for gender equality. That's because they don't have to be partners in the fight for gender equality they need to be partners in the fight for partnership for shared responsibility for shared life experiences everything you tell them when you say shit like this is that their life is dedicated to helping women seeing that women have the best of everything women have the life they need to have that they are slaves to the fucking V. That's right. Cunt worship. That's what you're teaching these boys. Put the cunt on the pedestal and worship it. And at no point are you saying to these boys, look after yourselves. And one of the ways that these boys can look after themselves, and one of the ways it's probably clever to teach these boys to look after themselves, and one that I've done for my sons, is to tell them that if they break the law by killing, rape or raping someone, you will fucking disown them. That there are limits to
to how far they can push their luck. And we can take it back to your Dr. Spock wanting to teach teach kids the Dr. Spock principles that, oh, we don't, we sweeten, we cuddle and, and cuddle our children and we keep them at the teat until they fucking 25. That shit doesn't fucking help because you are not teaching these boys to be responsible for themselves or to have respect for themselves. One of the things I know as a male through most of my life is the one place I do not want to find myself is in a prison cell. That knowledge in itself is enough to keep me from breaking any laws which would put me in a prison cell. Doesn't mean I haven't gone out and protested. It doesn't mean that I haven't, um, you know, spoken up on the internet. I, I don't take chances. But nothing I have done should blatantly break the law in such a way or bend the law in such a way that I should end up in a cell for any extended period of time. It's not hard to put these things in your children's head, and we should be putting that in the head of girls as well. According to a 2017 US survey uh, by Making Caring Common, oh, it already sounds like a fucking bullshit study, but okay, a project of the Harvard Graduate School of Education, oh, God. the School of Education, and I'm going to give that credit as something really serious, aren't I? A large majority of 18 to 25-year-olds have never had a conversation with their parents about consent and never heard from that they should have sex with someone too intoxicated to consent. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you don't need to sit your children down and tell them about consent. You do not need to tell them that when people are drunk, they can't consent. And and by the way, this is only something that we think happens to girls. Because we will quite happily keep boys... Uh, we will accept boys still have responsibility for their actions when they are intoxicated. So if a girl jumps a boy when he's drunk... He can still be the one blamed because he's the one assumed to have been in control of his faculties. Do we ever discuss this with girls? Do we ever discuss these things with girls? In any case, no, I didn't talk to my children about consent. Because basically that's part of life. Right from word go, when their behaviour goes beyond what is right in our household or outside of our household they are told to behave themselves we're not dr spock parents it can even lead to a smack if it's bad enough and this is how you teach consent constantly throughout their lives it is not a discussion that needs to be sat down and had not unless there's a problem and maybe you people have a problem with the way you're parenting, but my sons have no issue with understanding consent. What you want me to do, however, is have this specific feminist consent discussion, and I'll be fucked if I'm doing that. Because I'm not confusing my kids that way. Because it's a bullshit discussion. It's a bullshit idea. While 87% of women surveyed reported having experienced some form of sexual harassment, 76% of men reported they had never had a conversation... Hang on. Why did you jump from women experienced sexual harassment and not discuss boys or, or men having sexual harassment? Why did you... Um, jump to them not having you've, you've framed this just around the males as the perpetrators 87% women have surveyed or reported having sexual or some sort of experiences some sort of sexual harassment and how many boys how many men 76% of the men reported they had never had a conversation with their parents about how to avoid sexually harassing others do girls 
have that discussion? Do girls have that discussion at all? How many girls have had that discussion? Because by fuck they need to have it. There are so many girls out there using uh, e-thoughts, right? E-thoughts getting rich out of fucking scabbing money out of boys with a little bit of fucking cleavage. And and then their, their, seat, their little fucking pay later pussy uh, viewings. Have any girls been told not to do that? Because believe it or not, Boys are susceptible to that, and it should be considered sexual harassment. It certainly should be considered, um, oh, what was it you said before? I can't even think. But, but, but this is fucking shameful behaviour from women. And you just don't give a fuck. Technically, I'd think that would fit in here. Not necessarily the ethos, but the women who use their bodies, use their sexuality against boys and men as a weapon. You don't give a fuck. You think this is just about boys. And about one in three male respondents believe that men should be dominant in romantic relationships. You know... That would be fucking nice. And you know what else? Feminists think so too. Did you ask how many women think men should be dominant in romantic relationships? Because you don't say that here. You have very specifically gone after the boys saying, the boys, they, they have to be dominant. Yeah. You know, women like the men to be dominant. Women still want the men to pay their fucking bills when they go out on dates. Don't give me this fucking shit. You've, you've so hard, pushed this so hard to, to make this about boys being fucking criminal harassers. Domineering bastards. Fucking hell. You know, most of these behaviours I can pin down to women as well. But you don't give a fuck. You don't want to know if the women have these discussions. You don't want to know if the women are taught these things. I've for a long time said there's a major mistake in the way that we measure maturity. We think that because girls don't take risks and boys take risks, then it's the girls who are mature. But that's not fucking true. It is a male behavioural pattern to take risks. It is a female dominant behaviour pattern to not take so many risks. But it is taking responsibility for your life, for the risks you take, that is actually the measure of maturity. And women are fucking terrible at taking responsibility for things. So I think boys mature, and sometimes women just don't, full stop, ever. My grandmother never fucking grew up. She grew up in an orphanage where everything was someone else's responsibility and she seemed to go through her entire life that way. And, and I see it time and time again. Women who try and make someone else responsible for their acts. Oh, fucking the media, the press, the government, everybody. Everybody. Even this shit here is trying to make this about the boys are responsible, but the girls never are. And what you're telling me is the boys are expected to grow up and the girls aren't. While the, girls, while the results were worrying for women, yeah, and were they at all worrying for boys and did you even bother to find out? These norms were also bad for boys. No, 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 nothing you've said here is bad for boys. No, they haven't had conversations with their parents. And is it bad for boys? No, keeping them trapped in a man box. Oh, yeah. Uh, discuss, discouraging them from expressing vulnerability and empathy. No, 
No, fuck you. Fuck you right royally with a fucking ten foot barge pole. In fact, we'll fucking stake it right through you and stick it in the ground. You can fucking hang on the thing. You can tickle your fucking tonsils. Men have empathy. This is a bullshit statement from bullshit feminists. It is... When we look at who jumps into floodwaters to rescue people, who do you think is the most common person you will see jumping into those waters to do that? It is a man. Do you think that that doesn't come from a place of empathy? When someone sacrifices their entire life to work, to earn for some other people, in order for them to have everything they need to succeed in their lives. I'm talking about a wage-earning male versus, well, not even necessarily a home mother, but a mother and children. And it is generally the male who will... I'm an at-home father, so I, I stand aside from this, and I still see from the outside where the norm is. And, and what I was raised to believe was going to be my life. Men through their empathy and, and partly through our nature but certainly through our empathy we'll work our asses off work ourselves to death to support other people and make sure they have what they need don't you fucking give me this men don't have empathy shit as to vulnerability I do not believe vulnerability is something that adults should wear on their fucking sleeve it is okay to be vulnerable when it is appropriate. It is not important to be exp expressing your fucking vulnerability every fucking hour on the hour. It is not that important. Grow the fuck up, learn to absorb a few punches, and get on with your fucking life. Now, if women had empathy when they saw a man was possibly vulnerable or possibly uh, driving himself to the grave with his empathy, she might step in and try to support him. Now, I find that with my partners. I have supportive partners. But I'm seeing less and less of that nature of support when I read articles like this shit. It is women who do not have empathy for men. This is largely the problem. There's an empathy gap, a major empathy gap, because women are told that men are always the problem. And that, uh, and shit, I'm an at-home parent. I'm an at-home father. It's not men who tell me I should go to work and be supporting my family, because there's no fucking empathy for women for my position as an at-home father. None at fucking all. I am a man, I have a duty, go and fucking do that duty. And it's feminists who are often the worst at displaying this behaviour. I get fucked. Get right royally fucked when you say men don't have empathy. Uh, from asking for help from developing a sense of healthy relationships, what healthy relationships look like, according to Peggy Alston, well, she's a fucking bitch. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Boys and men, young men on hookups, love porn. Yeah, no, fuck off. I would bet Peggy has no fucking idea what she's talking about. None at fucking all. I bet she comes from this from a feminist perspective. She's ruled out any concept that there is a male perspective or what it might mean. And just so we know. Just so we know which fucking page we're on. Healthy relationships are something that women struggle to maintain these days. Women drive the divorce rates high. Women seem to have this idea that when they grow bored with a relationship, they should move on. Men are more attached to, the, to their relationships because it's harder for us to build them and form them. Yes, there is that 10, 20% at the top who can jump from one relationship to the next and fucking I've had my time doing that. But I understand that for most men, when they form a relationship, they want to work on that relationship. They want it to work. They want it to last. Because it's not that 
fucking easy to do. And women seem to think that they will remain youthful and young looking for fucking ever. And when they're in their 50s going, but I'm a sexy looking 50, 50 year old. Why can't I find a man? It's because you don't know what healthy relationships are and you do not know how to make them work. I'm an at-home father. I support two career women. Our relationship is healthy. Because it doesn't matter what you do with your life if you are supportive of one another. If you encourage one another. And women seem to have more problem with this than men and boys. Many gender-based violence researchers in Canada, in uh, NGOs, believe... Inter well, all right, we can ignore this already because this is a country with a, an extremely feminist-run um, gender violence narrative going on and, and industry. So we'll ignore this. It doesn't matter. I'll read it anyway. <laughs> believe interventions for adults who... Uh, perpetuate violence come too late after the harm has been done <sighs> you cannot go around telling everybody they are a fucking criminal all the time you just can't and i'm sick to death of this as a man in fact my partners are sick to hear of hearing this all the time with the fucking covid lockdown we had millions poured into um domestic violence uh, shit for the feminists purely feminist driven purely for women and all I got out of that is more television advertising telling me that there's something wrong with me because the numbers of cases went down they're now swinging this all sorts of different ways to try and make it sound like they're using their money uh, in a very clever way oh the cases got more complicated more alcohol and drugs are involved but not more cases Oh, more Google searches into the domestic violence. Well, fucking bitch, what do you think I was doing when I was at home locked down? I was researching too. I was sitting in front of a computer all day and reading shit as well. Your Google searches don't prove anything because what you didn't say when you said that was there was an increase in the use of the services websites. Every domestic violence website in Australia now has a fast close button that'll sit up about here somewhere big red button and a big red button says close quickly and what it does is remove all history of the website or at least it removes enough of it to make it hard for anyone to find how much harder do you think it is to hide a google search so google searches went up and you say that women can't go to the services because oh what if her husband finds that she's been on this website bitch the google search is harder to for harder to hide don't give me that shit <sighs> uh, but anyway yes all i've had over this entire lockdown period is advertising telling me how evil men are and i'm telling you i'm pissed fucking off i'm I've had enough. I don't give a fuck. You're all full of shit. I'm not one of the 5%. And I don't know how you get to the 5% to stop them. But you don't do it by telling the rest of us we're fucking broken, which is what this article is about. Now, now calling on local and provisional governments for more programs for middle and high school students designed to help promote healthier ideas about masculinity and gender equality masculinity and masculinity and gender inequality not fucking femininity no always the same fucking shit increasingly the question is not simply if we can stop domestic violence but something broader we can reimagine what it means to be a man no fuck off just fuck off until you're ready to reimagine what it is to be a fucking woman, you are not reimagining what it means to be a man. Right? You ask any 
woman who works in a workplace with other women, goes to school with other girls, girl going to school with other girls. If there are any bitchy girls in her environment, if there are any girls who bully, don't fucking throw this all on. I don't ever imagine what it means to be a man. No, fuck you. Aaron Pizzi was fucking dead right. This is a problem that exists for men and women. It exists for a small number of men and women, and they rub it against each other. Because that is the nature of the problem. You don't get to tell the rest of us that being a man is being broken. Fuck you. Mo Green retired from uh, Nova Scotia's Department of Health. Good. Fuck him. <laughs> oh, hang on. No, I think that's when he went into this bullshit. And his last government job to support a network of youth health centres. Okay, so he went and polluted the world with his shit. Um, oh, I see. This is something. This is something Mr. Creepy does in his um, off time. So Green started Guy's work. Yes, Mr. Creepy started a fucking thing. And he, he's not involved in education anymore. Um, oh, good. He estimates 150 school-based staff were trained by his fucking Creepy Guy program. <sighs> I can't read any more of this. I just can't. It just seems to keep going on and fucking on. And all I'm seeing is boys broken, creepy man, creepy. Uh, look, I'll I'll link it. You can all fucking read it for yourselves. But um, no, let's let's read the outro. See what happens. Um, the this emphasis on open and ongoing family discussion is important. No, it's not. Um, raising your children overall to be good people is what's important. These, this idea you have to sit and have discussions just fucking drives me up the wall. I, um, I, I said it early on, he gets the boys in a circle, and I said it was a circle jerk. There's a reason for that. Because whenever these people think they're going to sit men and boys down and, and give them a talk, or they'll sit around and talk about their problems or something, it's all I see is a fucking circle jerk. You know, sit around and fucking jerk each other off for an hour or so. Men don't work that way. And I don't believe that children necessarily work that way. It, it's hard enough to tell a child off and know that they are listening to you and learning anything from it. These are things that happen on an ongoing basis. These are not things where you sit down and have discussions rewriting the tra traditional scripts of masculinity fuck off again where's the word femininity in this sentence to build healthier narratives it's an exercise in imagining how a million exchanges could go differently just fuck off fuck what you want us to do is sit down with our kids and give them a fucking feminist um indoctrination session really you know what we're going to do we're going to create boys who hate themselves boys that think that they are just broken inside this is something that feminists do with girls too don't get me wrong always telling girls that they're not as good as boys they've got to strive to be as good as the boys and the men they've got to they can't compete in a boys and girls in a, bo a man's world. We need to have less work hours a week because um, men unfairly work too hard. It's all about telling girls they're fucking useless, and this is all about telling boys that they are criminal mind masterminds of a sexual nature. You can just all fuck off. You have the factor and patterns that contribute to gender-based violence. Can we just fuck off with gender-based violence? Unless we are willing to discuss the violence of women, there is no use in this word. Because what you mean is male-based violence. Because you are not discussing 
gender-based violence. You are not discussing the two genders, male and female. You are only ever saying male. This is a fucking outright lie. The idea that you're talking about gender-based violence. You're talking about male-female violence. And that is all you ever discuss. <sighs> anyway, violence is so interlaced to these programs, can only do so much. We have to look at the home where people congregate. And the external media and socialisation, says Wells. It's super complex and there is no silver bullet. Well, all I've got to tell you is that fuckwits like you are only making it worse. Our fucking morons like you lot are making it fucking worse. Because what you want to do is break men, break boys. You want them to be infused with so much fucking soy they might as well all be gay. And, and no, there's nothing wrong with being gay. And no, there's nothing wrong with being effeminate. And no, there's nothing wrong with being any version of man you want to be. And that's the point. There is nothing wrong with being whatever version of man you want to be. And I imagine that I could say the same of girls. Except I feel unwilling to do so because arseholes like you never fucking want to address the problem. So how about we just have better girls? How about we fix feminization? Thank you. And that's it. I've had enough. I'm going. I do not want to do this anymore. I've had enough of this. I'm out of here. I've been the anti-theocrat. May your gods remain fictional. And I will see you in the next one. Until then, have fun. <laughs>